Hey, buddy, where do you think you're going? You think you own these streets? Hey, what about that stop sign? What stop sign? What are you doing here? I got you the stuff you wanted. You didn't bring it here. No, no, it was in his briefcase. The whole works. You didn't bring the briefcase. No, I'm not stupid. Just what's inside. All right. It's in the paper. Give it to me. Get out of here. I told you not to come around here. Hey, hold on a second. Go on, get it out. Go on, blow. You could drum up. There'll be more usually. Usually, I know the usually. Well, the fewer guys get here, the less votes we need. We're not voting tonight. We're demonstrating support. Hey, who are the two guys in the fourth row over there next to the end? On the right? No. Uh -huh. That's uh, Bill Gibson and uh, Fred McAfee. They work for Carlton and Sons. They're a pretty average union guy, good bowlers. But Bill Gibson won four hundred dollars at a quiz show. That's very interesting. All right, wrap that gavel. Let's get the meeting on. All right, fellas. We got the honor of having our good friend and president, little Joe Broad, with us here tonight. And Joe is going to give us the lowdown on the sideshow that those politicians are starting tomorrow. Let's show Joe that we're with them all the way. Come on. I want to thank you men for the warm reception you just gave me, especially the guys that booed. It's good to know there are a couple of honest men in the room anyway. Now, I'm here to tell you guys that there's a circus coming here tomorrow. There's some phony politicians coming to town on a union busting expedition. They're going to ask me if I shot my grandmother. Yeah, I shot her. They're also going to ask me who paid for my yacht. 
Well, I don't own a yacht. I got news for you. I got two yachts, a front yacht and a back yacht. <laughs> now, maybe it's just a coincidence that the Senate committee is coming here while we're trying to negotiate with the employers. And if the employers want to know what kind of a deal we're going to make with the tool works, I'll tell them. We're going to give them the works. Your name Billy? Yeah. Shop steward? That's right. Got a note for you from himself. Says I got a job here. What if the boss don't like it? Well, you tell him I'm his insurance policy. As long as I'm working, he ain't gonna have any trouble. Hey, don't fool with the tools, will you? What's your line, anyway? It says helper. I know, but what kind of a helper? What do you care what kind? You got the word. A fellow named Bill Gibson around? Yeah, he's here. He's over there by the wash basin. A fellow on the right. Got the apple pie? Mm -mm, that's love. What? Sure. After ten years, Mary still cares. Oh, come on, man. What do you mean? Sure, it does. Doll? I'm not kidding. She's a doll, that gal. You're Bill Gibson. Seen you on a quiz show, didn't I? Could be. Them quiz shows are fixed. All of them. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Go on. I give you guys the answers before they ask the questions. Oh yeah? Hey, we got ourselves a mark here, Bill. Here's a little pocketbook of facts that we carry around for suckers just like you. Go on, take a look at it. Go on, ask any question in it. I bet you Bill can give you the answer. Let's see the color of your money. I'll hold it, though. Here's two bucks on Bill. Hmm. Sure you can afford it. All right. How old was Jesse James when he was killed? 34. <laughs> Got another five. You're covered. Says you don't know why they call a crumb who rats on his pals a stool pigeon. It's from a tame pigeon they put in the net to a, as a decoy to lure in other pigeons. <laughs> he took you again. Woo! We got a real pigeon this time, Bill. Bet you another five. Fine. When a mobster knocks off a punk, why does he always leave a dime in his hand? Guess I don't know that one. You're a smart fella. Just don't get too smart. Well, he sure had it open to the right place for a guy like him. Criminals. Hey, how come you didn't know the answer, Bill? They leave a dime to show how little his life's worth. Well, why didn't you speak up? Fred, sometimes it pays not to win too much money off strangers. Hey, you guys want to hear the Senate committee take on little Joe? Do you know, Mr. Braun, that 34 of the 42 individual unions that make up your organization are headed by men with prison records? I refuse to answer that question on the grounds of the Fifth Amendment of the Constitution of the United States. Mr. Braun. Did the treasurer of the Precision Toolers write a check for $8,245.88 to pay for a black limousine? I refuse to answer the question on the grounds of the Fifth Amendment. And is the title of said black limousine now in your name? I refuse to answer the question on the grounds of the Fifth Amendment. Mr. Braun, did the treasurer of the Precision Toolers write a check for $85,500 to pay for a house situated at 1529 Danton Road? I refuse to answer the question on the grounds of the Fifth Amendment. And is the title of said house at 1529 Danton Road now in your name? I refuse to answer the question on the grounds of the Fifth Amendment. That's the 17th time Little Joe has taken the Fifth Amendment. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I... Uh... <clears throat> 
May I object to the use of television cameras in this hearing room as uh, an unwarranted invasion of my client's privacy? Objection overruled. And as a prejudicial action designed to create uh, adverse public opinion uh, relative to Mr. Braun. If anything is creating adverse public opinion of your client, Mr. Cernak, it is taking refuge under the Fifth Amendment in defiance of the Ethical Practices Code of the American Federation of Labor and the CIO. Objection overruled. Mr. Braun, what is the name of the treasurer of the Precision Toolers? I refuse to answer the question on the grounds of the Fifth Amendment. Mr. Braun, may I remind you that if your use of your constitutional rights is obviously capricious, you can still be cited for contempt? Mr. Henlon, it isn't my constitutional rights if you decide when I can use it. <laughs> I will rephrase the question, Mr. Braun. Is the treasurer's name William Tragg? I refuse to answer the question on the grounds of the Fifth Amendment. The witness is excused, subject to the recall of the chair. Mr. Chairman, I will call William Tragg as my next witness. William Tragg? Mr. William Tragg. William Tragg? Mr. Chairman, I don't seem able to locate my witness. I would like a recess until this evening to try to find him. This committee will recess until 8 o'clock tonight. Bill! Bill, come on! Well, what's the matter? Oh, it's awful. Hurry! Bill. You call me a junkhead! Junkhead! Well, go on, Bill. Stop it. No, honey. Then I... <coughs> no. Oh. I don't understand you. Oh. He's hurting him. Bill, stop it, please. You can't fight all of his battles for him, honey. He's got to learn to take care of himself someday. Oh. Oh. I think you're cruel. Hey, hey! All right, you guys, come on, break it up. Break it up. Come on, up, on your feet. All right, now, what's the big battle all about? He tricked me! He shot me first! Oh, I thought now. you guys were supposed to be buddies. Yeah, but... You guys been watching the fights on TV Wednesday nights, huh? We're really going at it. Here, son, wipe the blood off your mouth. It's a pretty good right hook you had, Skip. Sure showed him, didn't I, Mr. Gibson? You sure did. Well, the fight's over. Now, what do we do? Come on, Skip, shake hands with him. All right. Go on, Timmy. OK, OK! Stick around. I'm going to get you a couple of peace pipes to smoke together. All right, come on, tigers. Yeah. Okay, Skip. Heat big pipe apiece. Gee, thanks, Mr. Gibson. Jimmy, light up. I'm gonna take this battler home, give him a shower and a rub down. I'll see you tonight, Bill. Okay, Fred. You don't want to fight with your friends, son, or you won't have any. I didn't do so good, did I, Pop? Oh, I don't know, son. I think you did fine. I'm not kidding myself, Pop. He licked me. <laughs> well, you proved one thing. You proved you can take it. That's important. What's so great about getting beat up? <sighs> well, if you get beat up and you don't quit, that proves you're a man. Does it? Sure. Hey, you know that last punch you threw? The one in the bread basket. Yeah, that was a good punch. Was it? Sure. Say, if I found my old boxing gloves, will you give me some pointers? Why, sure. 
Timmy Gibson eating ice cream. You'll spoil your dinner. Oh, Mother's just a little iced appetizer. What have we got for dinner? Roast beef and brown potatoes. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy! <laughs> roast beef! You go wash your hands, honey. Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Chairman, I'm still unable to locate my witness. William Tragg has not been seen since he drove away from the Union Hall last night. I have subpoenaed records he had volunteered to produce before this committee, but I have just been informed they are no longer in his office. Mr. Tragg is treasurer of the Precision Toolers. That is correct. And until we find them, I'm going to request Joe Braun to resume the witness stand. Hi, kids. Hello, baby. Hi. Hi, All right. Hi. You got the bridge table Hi, set up, buddy? I'm losing money waiting. When we get started, you're going to lose more. Oh, oh, hey, little Joe Braun's on television. Little Joe Braun. <laughs> Cowboy Pete here's been switching programs. Excuse me, Tom. Oh, gee, Dad, no. I have to go listen to the old radio. Well, do forgive me. It's pretty rough. Sit Mr. Braun, I have here a telegram from the president of the National Federation. It reads, this organization would like to go on record that any union official refusing to testify before a congressional committee on the grounds that he may incriminate himself is bringing adverse public opinion upon all organized labor and is liable to expulsion by a vote of the board of directors. Council may inspect this message. Mr. Braun, in the light of this information, will you consider carefully your answer to the next question? Do you know Jess Hastrell, convicted of embezzling $28,000 from Local 43? I refuse to answer the question on the grounds of the Fifth Amendment. Do you know Oscar Wetzel, commonly known as the executioner? I refuse to answer the question on the grounds of the Fifth Amendment. I will refresh your memory, Mr. Braun. The man sitting in the second seat in the front row is Mr. Oscar Wetzel, with a record of eight arrests for assault, mayhem, arson, and second-degree murder. Do you know him? Come on, let's play cup. You know, I think I've seen that face someplace before. Face isn't familiar to me. Mr. Braun, this man is notorious, and you're the head of a big public organization. By hiding behind the Fifth Amendment, you're admitting hiding. that you're... I'm not hiding. Hiding behind the Fifth Amendment, Mr. Braun. But who says so? Among others, the National Federation of Labor. What do they know about things? They know that if a man has nothing to hide, he's not afraid to... Wait a minute. Mr. Senator, may I state right here and now that I ain't afraid of nothing. You do know Oscar Wetzel, don't you, Mr. I Braun? I never heard of him before in my life. Quiet down. All right, come on. Come on, come on. Let's play right now. Come on, come on. All right, got the table ready? Mr. Braun, has any officer of the Precision Toolers ever paid any of the bills for your private racing stable? What private racing stable? I have here an affidavit signed by William Tragg, treasurer at the Precision Toolers, in which he states that the union paid out $18,500 for your stabling bills. Well, if he said that, he's a liar. The witness is excused. And I will request the chairman's permission to bring a charge of perjury against Mr. Braun. <laughs> permission granted. The hearing is now adjourned. Hello, Baggett. Yes, I'm aware that the shop steward called all the men off the job today. Well, I'll try and get them back as soon as possible. Right, now hang on just a minute. Hello, Charlie. Get a hold of the shop steward at Baggett Manufactures and tell him I want all the men back on the job by tomorrow. I don't care what their grievances are. You just get them back, that's an order. You got it from me. Right. Hello, Baggett. Did you hear that? Yeah, well, look, anytime you have a problem, you just call me personally. That's right. Well, we'll help each other, right? One hand forces the other. Right, kid. Nice talking to you, Baggett. Bye. Well, there you go. That company now owes me a favor. In a few days, I'm going to ask him for it. 
You're going to need a lot more than a favor if you don't stay with the fifth. <laughs> Why did you deny knowing Wetzel today? Because Wetzel is hot. All the more reason. Oh, you're a worrier. Look, I've explained it to you. You stay with the fifth, all they can pin on you is contempt. Mm -hmm. Perjury is a lot worse, Joe. Several years worse. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Anybody on the outside ever see you with Wetzel? I don't know whether anybody. Wait a minute. There were a couple of guys that saw me out in front of the Union Hall the other night. Get that, will you? Yeah. Hello. Who wants him? Joe. A couple of guys in front of the Union Hall, huh? Joe. Huh? Oh. Cliff held in the Federation. Hello, Cliffy. Yeah. Yeah, well, they tried to saw me up a little bit today, but they didn't get very far. <laughs> the board met in what? What? Hello, Bill. Hi, Pop. Look what Uncle Joe gave me. A, a silver dollar. That's, that's quite a bit of money for a little boy like you, isn't it? Gee, it sure is. I'm going to go show it to Skip. Hmm. Hello, darling. I told Mr. Brown you'd be home soon. Hmm. Do you want me to hold up dinner for a while? Well, it's a uh, nice place you got here. Thank you. But a pretty girl like this deserves a lot better. Well, uh, we like it. If you'll excuse me, Mr. Brown, I'll go take care of my Go right ahead. Sure. Oh, maybe you'd like to stay for dinner. Thanks, but I can't. I'll take a rain check. Okay. It's a real living doll you got there. You ought to keep your eye on her. Oh, I don't have to watch my wife, Mr. Brown. Oh, just call me Joe. You know, I've had my eye on you for quite some time. I'd like to talk a little business with you. Let's sit down, shall we? Yes, uh, a couple of my guys tell me that you're... Real smart fellow. Well, I, I don't quite get you, Mr. Brown. Uh, uh, what do you mean you've been watching me? Well, a big union like the Precision Toolers are always on the lookout for new talent. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just don't get the point. How'd you like to come to work for me as an organizer? 200 bucks a week and an expense account. Oh. Look, Mr. Brown, I, I don't know anything about getting guys to join a union and and if you're thinking about uh, strong arm stuff, you, know, you got the Ooh, wrong guy. Wait a minute, no, sir. <laughs> no, nobody said anything about strong arm no, stuff. I'm a real peaceful guy. I like my work and I like my family. Yeah, and you want to take good care of them. Yeah. Yeah. I saw you on television yesterday, Mr. Brown. You did. Yeah. Some of those organizers of yours are pretty rough-looking characters. <laughs> It's okay, Mom. Skip spoke, say he can go. His mother's gonna pick us up. It's a cute kid you got there. You wanna know who those guys were on that TV program the other day? They were union busters. Yeah? You said something a few minutes ago about strong arm stuff. Sure, we used to have a few guys like that on the payroll. We had to fight fire with fire. But things have changed. We have a new thing now called public relations. Sure, it's, it's good business for me to hire different types of men. Next big league ball player, good clean-cut family man with a reputation of packing muscle between his ears instead of his knuckles. Oh, you could do the union a lot of good. I want you on my payroll, Billy Boy. I... I don't think I want to work for you, Mr. Brown. Oh, you're working for me anyway. You're in my union. And when you become a part of my personal staff, you get a bigger check. And no grease under the fingernails. This may sound crazy, but I like working my lathe, and I think I'll stick with Carlton. 
Don't make up your mind too fast. You think it over, Billy Boy. Good night, Mrs. Gibson. Goodbye, Mr. Brown. Come again, won't you? Yes, I might do that. You've got a real stubborn husband here. Take good care of him. Bill, breakfast is ready. Oh, Fred not here yet? No, you can't even start your breakfast without him. Ooh, waffles. Hi, kids. Morning, right. Fred. Will you have a waffle? No, thanks, hon. I had a big breakfast. A little bacon. No, thanks, just the same. You want to know what happened to me last night? Wait till you hear what happened to me last no. night. No. No, wait a minute. Will you listen to me? Little Joe came over to my house last night. You're kidding. Yeah, the man himself. Hey, that does look like pretty good bacon. Um, uh, help yourself. You mind? They offered me a job organizing for the tours. 200 bucks a week. Very funny. That's what he offered me. <laughs> you did? Yeah. It was here last night. But, Fred, you take the job because I turned it down. You must be nuts turning down a job that pays 200 bucks a week. I think I'll just have a little smidgen of waffle here. Uh, uh, Mary, uh, fix Fred a waffle, will you? Not really, Mary. No, I just couldn't eat a thing. Just a little piece here. And take the whole thing. No, I've had my breakfast. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. No, thanks. Thank you very much. Now, you want a big laugh? <laughs> I turned the job down, too. <laughs> Both must be a couple of nuts. Hmm. Hey, can I have a little more coffee, Mary, just to keep it warm, please? How about some milk, too? No, thanks. Not really, I'm not hungry. You know something I can't figure out? Why, um, why a character like this Braun would want you and me working in his outfit? Well, maybe he figures he's gonna have trouble keeping the precision tutors in line. Hmm. You know, now that he's been kicked out of the Federation. I still don't know where we'd fit in the picture. What do you mean? We're a couple of very popular guys. Uh, hey, if we're gonna stay popular, we better get out of here. Mm. Bye, son. Bye, Dad. Thanks for the cup of coffee, Mary. I'll go see what it's all about. Hey, what's the beef? What do you care? It's a pickle line, ain't it? Look, I didn't come over to argue. I just want to know what's going on here. The boys wasn't happy with the working conditions. So, they walked out. I've been working for Carlton for 10 years. i never seen any of these guys before. So what? Listen, only a fake goes to a pickle line. You get the message? Where's Bailey? Who's he? What do you mean, who's he? You're running a strike and you don't even know the shop steward. You got any complaints? Take them up with little Joe. On your way. Now, wait a minute, Hey, Joe. Bill! All right, one side, you punks. There's a strike going on here, boy. What strike? I don't know nothing about no strike. Get out of my way. Come on, boys, get him. Guys, it's like taking a swing at a cop. Any of those guys, any of those 
Just take it easy. <laughs> Bailey, what's this about anyway? Who called a strike? All I know is I got a phone call from Little Joe. Said this guy named Zatko was coming over with some pickets. We should listen to him. I don't get it. Look, there's as many of us as there are of them. Let's rush them. Take it oh, easy. Take it Fat easy. Bird. What do you say we all go down to the Union Hall? See what the score is on this thing. Good idea. It's a good idea. Come Let's go. Come on. What's going on, Brano? We came to work this morning and found a picket line. Yeah, there's a strike. How can there be a strike? There hasn't been a vote. Nobody even told me, and I'm the shop steward. Nobody has to tell you. Read your bylaws, Bailey. Oh, that's a lot of bull. Where's little Joe? He's busy. Hey, listen, Brannell. We're dues-paying members of this union. If you want to see little Joe, we're going to see him. Sure, Fred. As a matter of fact, Joe wants to see you, too. Come on. Hey, is that Bill Gibson here, too? Yeah, I'm here. Yo, come on, boys. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm the shop steward at Carlton. Yeah, and you're going to keep on being the shop steward if you learn to keep your mouth shut. Now, when Joe wants to see you, I'll tell you. Now, come on, boys. Hello, boys. How's it going? That's what we'd like to know. We come to work this morning, find a bunch of yeggs blocking the gate. I wouldn't say yeggs. Them are nice boys. Here, have a cigar. How about you, Bill? No, no, no. Yeah? Well, I guess you guys want to know what's going on, huh? Yeah, we sure do. Well, how would you like a 15% raise in salary and a three-week paid vacation? Who wouldn't? You're fine, but you, you got to win a strike first. That strike was won before I called it. Carlton and Sons can't operate without high-test alloys, and the only place they can get what they need is at Backett Manufacturers. And they'll be very happy to give you boys the 15% increase, or else. You follow me? No. You're supposed to be the smart one here. Explain it to your partner. Well, evidently, Mr. Brown has put some kind of pressure on this, uh, uh, was it Beckett Manufacturing? Through the metallurgist's local, one of my unions. And through them, he can force Carlton to pay what he wants. My boys said you were smart. They were right. Excuse me. Braun. Yeah? Yeah, listen, I know the law as well as you do. No, that... There'll be no mediation, no cooling off period. It's 15% and three weeks. Or I'm closing you down for good, you understand that? All right, take it to court. It'll take you two years to win the case if you do win it. What are you gonna do with that big plant in the meantime, knit neckties? No, I'm not coming down there to talk to you. If you wanna talk to me, come up here. Well, there you go. I'll bet you, Finn, that they throw in the towel before six o'clock. Now, why don't you come in with me? Come on my payroll, and I'll give you 300 bucks a week. No more grease under the fingernails, and you can take that pretty wife of yours out nightclubbing. No, I still don't get it. Who gave you the authority to call a strike? Did the men vote? Are you kidding? Did you ask the officers of the local or the board? Who do you think you are, a Philadelphia lawyer? Look, why don't you boys think it over? I'll, uh, I'll talk to you later, huh? Come on, Fred. Anybody that's got anything to say, stand up and say it. I got plenty to say. My old man had to raise eight kids on three bucks a day because there was no union in those days. Sure, we're a lot better off right now, but how long are we gonna stay better off if a bunch of stiffs can throw a picket line around a plant without asking us? Right. Yeah, right. I think it's about time somebody told little Joe Braun that we're not working for him, he's working for us. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. I'm the shop steward at Carlton and Son, but when a guy named Zatko can come around, a guy that nobody ever heard of before, when this guy can come around and tell everybody what to do, then he can have my job. I'll resign right now. No. No. All right. Joe will be here. He's just held up. He's a, he's a little late. Just hold it down, will you, fellas? The red just sticking your neck out. What are you giving me? Boo! How do you think you're going to look without teeth? A lot better than I'd look without guts. Boo! Are you 
guys asking for me? Yeah. yeah. What about that strike? I'll tell you about that strike. Joe, I told him. Quiet. Well, how did you like your vacation, boys? No. What vacation? We get paid for vacations. Well, you're going to get paid for this one, too. The strike is over, boys. You get a 15% raise in pay and a three-week paid vacation. I don't believe it. That is everybody in this room is going to get it except Fred McAfee there, who isn't paid up in his dues. What are you nuts or something? Here's my dues book, all paid up. All right, let me see his dues book. Get it for me. Give it to me. Go on. Take a look at it. Just like I thought. Six months delinquent. Here, Brannell, suspend him. You're out of your mind. <laughs> Violence in here. Hold it. Let's try and conduct this meeting with a little dignity. Go on, get him out of here. here. Are you going to let him do this to me, you guys? Don't let him take me out of here. Then let him go. All right, all those in favor of the 15% raise, say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, motion passed. Meeting dismissed. Of course I'm all right. Punk, give me a match. Simmer down, Fred, simmer down. Simmer down. Take a punch you like a pig like Braun stepping on your face. I wouldn't like it. I wouldn't like it any more than you, and you know it. But, oh, come on, Fred. Because I'm just a peaceful guy. I get to thinking about Mary and Timmy, and I, I, I just want to stay out of trouble. Well, that's fine. You just stay right out of trouble. Go on back in there and join your friends. Oh, no, don't talk like a sap. If you're my friend, you know it. Oh, no, no. You can't afford to have me as a friend anymore. I'm on little Joe Braun's dirt list now. Look, we'll go down, have a beer, sit down and talk it over. Look, you guys aren't going to let Braun throw you out of the union or suspend you. Are you kidding? For a 15% pay raise, they let him cut my thumbs off. Almost ready. Call Timmy. Where is he? Out back? Last time I saw him. Timmy! 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 Skip, have you seen Timmy? Nope, haven't seen him. Timmy back yet? No, dear. Dinner will be spoiled. You know what he's going to get? A good belt right across the bottom. Sorry, So nothing's happened to him. You won't spank him when he comes home. Are you kidding? Mary, do you have any idea what this house would be like without that kid in it? I'm going to call the emergency hospital. Bill, you don't think something's happening? I don't think anything. I just want to make sure it's not the worst. Uh, get me the West Side Emergency Hospital, please. Oh, Bill. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. What do you know? We beat him 18 to 6. I made two touchdowns. Timmy Gibson, how dare you stay out to this hour? It's pitch dark out. And look at your sweater and your pants. What you need is a good old-fashioned spanking. I mean it, Bill. You get in there and wash your face and hands and go to bed without any supper. And if you ever pull a trick like this again, you're really going to get a hide. Now go on. Oh, gee. Get in the bedroom. Gee willikers, 
fella can't ever have any fun around here. Oh, brother. Oh, Bill, I was so frightened. You and me both. Wow. Oh. Bill, what are you going to do about Timmy? What do you mean, what are we going to do about him? I mean, I don't know. I think if, if he does this again, I'll... I forgot all about it. The kid had me so darn worried. Fred got in trouble over at the Union today, and, well, I thought it might be a nice idea if we went over and, well, <laughs> gave him sort of moral support. Okay? All right, honey, I'll go get my sweater. Hey, Mary. The guy you made such a big hit with is in a lot of trouble. Listen to this. Little Joe Braun's perjury trial will be heard in federal court November 1st. If convicted, Braun could be sentenced to a term of five years in the state penitentiary. All right, you hear me? Be there in a minute. I thought your father told you to go to bed. You can't go to bed without something to eat. Gee, thanks, Mom. All set, darling. What are you doing, knitting that sweater? Mmm, <laughs> you smell good. Oh, honey, I forgot my cigarettes. You go on, I'll catch up with you. Okay. Well, okay, go ahead, live it up. You're welcome. You. You're a smart one, aren't you? What do you mean? I happen to like you, that's all. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> You, 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 you. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Alice? Hi. Hi. Thought maybe you and Fred would like to play a little bridge tonight. Fred hasn't come home yet. I'm getting a little upset. Put that down. I want to talk to you. Put it down. Come around here. Put the drink down. I want to talk to you. Now, who told you to set this guy McAfee on fire? He didn't even see us. You told me to scare him, didn't you? So I poured a little gas on him. A little gas? It's not my fault this stupid Lou lights a match, you know. How do you think this is going to look for me at the trial? Look, you don't set anybody on fire unless I tell you to. You understand? You want to know every time I put a bullet in a gun? I didn't you say told that. You to shut this guy up, didn't you? You want to know exactly beforehand how I'm going to do it? Are you trying to pick a beef with me? Hmm? No, I just want to get my orders straight, that's all. Well, your orders were to go and get a picture of this guy, McAfee, and to show it to Tony. That's what your orders were. Well, at least you got the picture, huh? Tony? Tony? Come here. I want you to take a look at this guy in the photograph. His name is McAfee because he came into your gas station the other day and got that can of gas. Where did he get the gas for? He got the gas so he could set my house on fire, stupid. But your house ain't on fire. No, but it will be.
Little Joe Braun says it's the other way around. Got a story here in the paper that says that McAfee tried to burn his house down. Joe Braun is a liar. Of course, you realize he might get robbed. Mr. Heldon, tell him to call me. I'll be there. Guy who was raised the way I was. It's to go to the cops, but... Hello? Get me Henley in the DA's office. Henley, this is uh, Cliff Heldon, Labor Federation. I've got a witness here who can convict Joe Braun of perjury. That's right. His name is Bill Gibson. He'll testify he saw Braun and Wetzel together outside the Union Hall. Yeah. The night before Braun testified, he'd never even seen the man. The night Bill Tragg disappeared. Henley, I think if you put some men on it, you'll find that Bill Tragg was murdered. All right, shut that slop off and burn it right now, right here in front of me. Yes, Joe. Send in Lou and Danny, please. Well, Slim, you've done a good job for me. I'm putting you on my permanent payroll. Well, thank you, Mr. Brown. That's great. And to start off, you can make a private phone call for me. Hey, Bill, phone for you. Huh? It's a phone for you. Okay. Gibson speaking. Now, this is the district attorney's office. We want to talk to you about your testimony. How late do you work? Who am I talking to? You're a smart fellow to want identification. Does the name Cliff Heldon ring a bell? Uh, sure. He called us about you. Now, uh, how late do you work? I don't know. I got some overtime, probably until 6, 6.30. Uh, can you come down to the district attorney's office in the city hall when you're through? Yeah, I guess, uh... yeah, yeah, sure. Mary? Honey, I might be a little late tonight, so don't worry about me. Okay, hon. with me. What do you want to stop here for? The trial starts tomorrow. We've got to get down to my office and discuss it. We'll discuss it here. What's wrong with my office? You pay me, I'll talk where you want. I pay you, you talk where I want. Come on. Gibson gets on the stand, says he saw you with Wetzel. You know, that ties you right in with the human torch bit. Yeah. 
Then you're halfway to Alcatraz. Well, don't worry about Gibson. He won't give us no more trouble. Now, well, what makes you so sure? Did you buy him off? Not a dollar. Well, what did you do with him? I told you Gibson wouldn't give us any more trouble. Now, is that enough? No, Joe, that's not enough. I gotta know what's going on if I'm gonna protect us. Is he alive? That's a lousy crack. I don't think I like it. Your witness. Oh, I'm getting out of here. Don't! Look, if you get in trouble, you're gonna need a lawyer. Bad. I'm no good to you if I'm a defendant, too. Look, Counselor, you just drove me over to this place so I could talk to some business associates. Now, why don't you go in the other room and wait for Cahern to come here, play some cards and cool off, huh? You're sticking your neck out to be in the same room with him. You know how many years it took me to build up this business, do you? And this is the only guy that could blow it up. And I'm gonna take care of him personal. You understand that? How's your customer? Sleeping peaceful. Well, tape his eyes. And counselor, while you're out there, figure out what this guy's gonna say on the stand exactly. Exactly, you understand? Where am I? I'll tell you where you ain't. You ain't in court testifying. Stand up. Man said stand up. No! Oh! All right. Now sit down, you fink. Association. What association? The Anti Stooley Association. All right, don't mark him, don't mark him. Stand up. He should stand up. You look pretty good at the bottom of the harbor in a slab of concrete. Oh, let's cut him first. Sit down. He said, sit down. Oh. Oh. You know what you are, Stewie? You're a dead man. Dead man. What's going on here, boys? We're just getting ready to give this fink the back road treatment. Oh, you don't have to kill this man. Oh, I got no choice. If he gets on the witness stand tomorrow, he's going to sing like a canary. Oh, maybe not. Maybe you listen to reason. Let me talk to him. It isn't very smart to get yourself killed. You leave your wife a widow. What would you do for eating money? <coughs> Who'd look out for your kid, Billy boy? Joe? Joe Brown? Yeah. Yeah, it's me. Listen, I'm here to help you, kid. This is out of my hands now. These guys mean business. This guy Wetzel would just as soon kill you as look at you. Look, all they want you to do is when they ask you to identify Wetzel as the guy you saw in front of the Union Hall, they just say it was dark. You can't make sure. It's an honest mistake. 
Is, is that all? That's all. Seven good union members are going to testify they were playing poker with Wetzel at the same time you thought you saw him. Now you do this and Wetzel will give you ten grand. You can get yourself started in a business, your wife will get her husband back, your kid will have a father, and you won't end up a piece of meat on a marble slab. Little Joe, there's not going to be any marble slab. Don't be too sure, Billy boy. You can't get away with any more disappearing witnesses. And I'll tell you why. Why? Go ahead, tell me why. One serving of cold meat in a marble slab might be considered coincidence. Even the second witness set on fire. Might, might be some doubt about that, too. But if witness number three disappears, three strikes and you're out, Joe. I mean, really out. If they don't get you for murder, they'll pin something else on you. They. I happen to control they. You don't own public opinion. Now, remember what that did for Capone? They couldn't hang murder on him either. So they got him for something else. They got him for income tax evasion. They couldn't pin any killings on Lozano, so they deported him. Little Joe, if witnesses against you keep disappearing, the newspapers will keep you in the front page till you're a dead pigeon. You know, they told me you were a smart guy. I'm beginning to think you're pretty dumb. You leave me no way out. I'll leave you one out. One, Joe. I'm going to witness stand tomorrow and, and testify I saw Wetzel in front of the union hall. Period. Nobody's goons. Had me kidnapped. They can believe me or they can believe your seven poker players. Well, you know, it's too bad, Billy Boy. You didn't come to work for me when I asked you to. You know me, Billy. I don't negotiate with a guy when I got him where I want him. Well, it looks like, fellas, we can't do business like gentlemen. Don't mark up his face. He has to testify tomorrow. It's cold as a clam. Get a bucket of water. Slim, go wire him up. Making a good witness out of him. How can he? I don't care what he says now, what he promises. He can double cross you on the stand tomorrow. There's not a thing you can do about it. You underestimate me, Cernak. I'll be back to you in a minute. the water. You practically outsmarted yourself into the 500 buck policy. You know what policy that is, Billy? It's the union's death benefit. If you don't stop giving me trouble, it'll go to pay for your funeral. It'll be your funeral, too, little uh, Joe. No, it won't be my funeral, because you won't disappear. No, we got something special for you. You're going to have a, an automobile accident in your own car. We've got your car, Billy boy. You're not going to have me killed, Joe. 
If you were, you wouldn't even be in the same room with me. Look, don't get smart with me. Smart boy, the only chance you've got is to level with me. And don't lie to me. Because if you lie, I'm going to take up a collection for your widow. Don't even think of lying to me. I'm going to let you go home pretty soon, see? And you drive straight home, you tell your wife that you worked a little late. Nothing else, you hear? And don't try and use the phone either, because the wires will be tapped. Is that understood? When you get to court tomorrow, you don't say nothing till you get on the stand. And then you say exactly the right thing. Is that understood, the right thing? All right, what's your full name? Bill Gibson. What's your wife's name? Mary. Your kid's name? Timmy. Now, I want you to repeat this after me, Billy. When they ask me to identify Wetzel... When they ask me to identify Wetzel... I'll say I made a mistake. I'll say I made a mistake. He's lying. Feel that thing around your fingers, Bill? And this thing over here on your arm, you're hooked up to a lie detector. You just committed suicide, smart boy. Get out! Put him on the couch. All right, we'll do it the hard way. Got everything ready for the Halloween party? In the car. Lou? Yeah. You go with him, make it fast. Timmy, you want to trick or treat? Gee, thanks! Hey, you want some more, kid? Gonna let you go home, Billy boy. <coughs> what? Gonna let you go home. We don't need you around here anymore. Besides, you have to be in court tomorrow to testify the right way. What's the catch? There's no catch. You're gonna testify the way I told you to. All right, say something. But say, say what? Daddy? Timmy? Daddy! Timmy! Daddy! You listen to me, Bron. If you hurt that kid, I'll kill you. You listen to me, smart boy. Nobody's gonna hurt that kid. Unless you testify the wrong way. All right. Okay, you win. Right. Send the boy home. Send the boy home? Well, you got things turned around. The kid don't leave this place until after you recite your piece. Can't keep him here until after the trial. His mother will call the police. No, she ain't gonna call no police. You know why? Because you're gonna be at home telling her not to. All right, get him out of here. Oh, just, just a minute. I, I want to talk to the boy first. That's out. Listen, Bron. You know how the American people feel about kidnapping a child. They tear you apart. I'm the only one that can save you. <laughs> you can't even save yourself. Look, I can beat this rap with you in the witness chair or at the bottom of the harbor. Either way. Now, maybe you could have an hour ago, but not now. You know, Bron, the only way I, I have half a chance with a guy like you is to make sure you're afraid of me. Well, you better be afraid of me. If anything happens to that kid, you'll get the gas chamber. Now, you 
help me to get home before Mary calls the police. Send Timmy in here, right now. All right, send the boy in here. Bring him in. Are you all right, son? Mm hmm. Hmm? You sure? Uh, it looks like the enemy captured us, doesn't it? Will they kill me? No, 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 of course not. I'll give you such a crazy idea. One of them said if I don't keep no, no, quiet... No, no, never mind about that. Look, Timmy, I want to whisper something in your ear. Now, look, tomorrow morning we're, we're going to escape. Don't you say anything about it. All right. Don't you be afraid. All right, let's go. All right, where's your steps? More steps. Mary. Bill, Mr. Howland's here waiting. What's wrong? Uh, nothing, nothing. But are you, are you all right? I'm fine, honey. We uh, came to talk over your testimony tomorrow, Bill. Well, uh, I've, I've been thinking about that, and, well, maybe... Maybe what? Well, it, it was kind of dark, and, well, I, I, I could have made a mistake. What's the matter, getting scared, or does somebody get to you? Excuse me, Mr. Helen, but, Bill, I'm worried about Timmy. He isn't home yet. Uh, it's, it's all right, Mary. It's, it's, it's early. But it's very late. I'll phone Alice and see if Skip's home Mary, yet. Mary, please, I'll go look for him. Alice won't mind if I call her. We've been waiting here almost an hour. I'm sorry. We didn't come to you about being a witness. You came to us. Hello, Alice. Is Skip home yet? Mary, please. Did little Joe Braun find out you were going to testify? You tell me. More than an hour. But where's Timmy? Mary. Please. Then he did find out. What'd you do, sell out? Sets fire to your friend and you sell out for a few lousy bucks. Is that the kind of a man that you are? He saw Timmy going away with who? How long have uh, Alice, I I'm sorry. We'll call you back. I've got to use the phone now. Now, look here, Gibson. You're going to have to answer a few questions. Well, will you let me alone, please? Let me alone. Bill, something's wrong. Something's happened to Timmy. Mary, Mary, nothing's happened to Timmy. Believe me. Look, would you get out, please? I'll talk to you tomorrow, any time you say, but not now. You're going to go to court tomorrow. We can't put this off. If you hadn't volunteered to testify, we'd have postponed the trial till there was more evidence. If they let him off tomorrow, they can never try him again. I can't help that. Mary? Bill. This may not mean anything, but I... But what? Well, Skip saw Timmy go off in a car almost two hours ago with a couple of witches. 
couple of what? It must have been a couple of guys with masks on. Anyway, I asked Skip about the car. He said it was an old black sedan. Fred, I, I know all about it. Timmy's all right. Well, if he's all right, where is he? Look, it was an old black sedan they brought me home in, Bill. I tell you, he's all right. Bill! Wait a minute, wait a minute. I, uh, I think I know the way Bill feels. They took your son, didn't they? No. No, no, will you get out of here? What was their price for bringing him back? I'm going to call the police. No, you're not. They have kidnapped him, haven't they? You can't lie to me, Bill. Listen, it wouldn't do any good to go to the police. They can search the city. They can put it on the radio, no, the television. No, no, that's one thing we can't do. If it gets out that he's been kidnapped, they... They won't have any more use for him. They, they'll, they'll destroy the evidence. They'll kill him. <laughs> They've got my kid. Look, Bill. If you decide to go to court tomorrow and testify for them, I won't say a word. That goes for me, too. But if you perjure yourself for Braun, just how safe is he? Yeah, look what they did to McAfee. Yeah, I'll be safe until the trial, but what about after? You think they'll say thanks and let him go? Oh, Bill, we have to do something now. I agree with Mrs. Gibson. It's a police business. Uh, if I could just be sure, I could, I could find that place again. You were there? Yeah. Well, do you know the street? Bill, could you recognize the neighborhood? They, they, they had a tape on my eyes. You were blindfolded? Well, how do you expect to find it? I was listening. Half a million houses in this city. Hope to find one house and a half a million. It's impossible. I'm going to find that place and get my kid back tonight. You haven't got a prayer. Then you pray for me. Bill, Bill. You want my car? Here are the keys. When we came in, they pushed me out. I fell in this direction. We came from that way. Move over. Mary, please, stay here. He's my son, too. How far in that direction? To the freeway. Why the freeway? I heard cars. Speed is the rest of the traffic. A time it for me. 45 seconds from that exit over there. Well, how do you know it's 45 seconds? Timed it for my pulse beat. 72 to the minute. Pulse beat? And there's still no sign of a turnoff. There's going to be. There's the on-ramp over there. We we'll find the entrance to it and work backwards. It ought to be around here someplace. Hey, what's that? Yeah, but which way did we turn onto the boulevard, right or left? Just before we came on the freeway, we made a right. No, I mean, before we turned, we passed a lot of parked cars. Parked cars? Well, there wasn't anything like that back there, right or left. There's a high school stadium at the corner of Peel. Maybe they had a football game tonight. That's worth a trial. Shut up. There's your stadium. I knew it was impossible. I, I don't understand it. I, I, I know I heard the sound that we were passing a lot of parked cars. Not in front of this stadium. Is there any place else around here where uh, a lot of cars could be parked? Not that I know of. Well, what'll we do now? 
Joe, call the police. No, no. cars here. Ah, oh, this is a wild goose chase. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, You'll kill us. Close your eyes and listen. That's the sound. It's the bridge. It does sound like parked cars, doesn't it? Right on the nose. What now, Bill? Well, there's, uh... Something like a business section, I guess. Uh, rough streets and uh, a dance hall of some sort. I heard Scotch music. Well, there's your business district. No dance hall here. No, but the road's rough. You sure you heard Scotch music? Bagpipes. Just before that, it sounded like the car had a flat tire. That's it. There's a flat tire. Car strips across the road. What do you know? Hey, what are you doing? Going back to that beat joint. Miss, excuse me, have, have you heard any bagpipe music tonight? Bagpipes? Are you kidding? No, do, do you have a radio or a jukebox in here? A jukebox, yes, but it plays only opera. Verdi, Puccini, Leon Cambello, Monterey. How about a television store? Is the one in the neighborhood open? Oh, look, Buster, you want to see cowboys? Go home to your own pad. Or a movie house. Or a, a hall where Scotchmen could be having a party. I don't dig dance halls. Run along, lover boy. Look, miss, are you are you positive that you uh, haven't heard any bagpipe music? And I haven't heard any harps either. Only Verdi and Puccini on the jukebox. So goodbye now. Yes. What's that? That's the crazy kid who takes out the girl next door. He's always blasting his car radio. Car radio? Excuse me, were, were you parked here a half hour ago? Hey, I don't want to break this up. Excuse me, but were you parked here a half hour ago? So what? So it's against the law to park? Were well, you listening to bagpipe music? Scotch bagpipe music? Do you think we'd listen to that kind of corn? I turned it off. Now what? The, uh, first right. Yeah, but which street? Coming out of a circle, they're all right turns. Look for yourself. Well, which one? Well, uh, take the first right. It's not much of a turn. Wait a minute. I, I don't remember three dips. Must be that other street. First stop signal, then a left and up a hill. Oh, we've got the wrong street. Let's see, we, we stopped at a signal just before we turned into the street with a dip. Thanks. It had to be a signal because we waited too long for it to be a stop sign. I suppose there were other signals before that one, and they were green. Would have gone right through it, and I'd never have known they were there. Well, we'll just, just go back to the boulevard and try the next signal, and the next, and the next, and the next. <laughs>
<sighs> no. Well, you can't say we haven't tried. There it is. How do you know this is the right house? I remember the steps four down from the porch and that short sidewalk, five more down to this sidewalk. Okay. Mary, go back to that last phone booth we passed and call the police. All right. I'm Cliff Helen, Labor Federation officer. Drop him. Officer. His men broke in here, began slugging everybody in sight. I want them all arrested. This is Little Joe's lawyer. They kidnapped Bill Gibson's boy so he wouldn't testify That's tomorrow. That's complete fabrication. Officer, who's in charge? I am. Look, these men kidnapped my boy. Hold it. Jim upstairs, Joe downstairs, Jack Shakeham. They're holding him here someplace. Where? I, I don't know, but 
I, I talked to him in this house not more than a half hour ago. Braun, too. Officer, I've been in this house all afternoon. I never saw this man before. Wait, wait. I, I know that voice. They, they had me, too, before. They had my eyes taped, but I know I heard that voice. And, and there was another one. He, he had a cold. He was, he was always sneezing. And this, this is Wetzel. This is Wetzel, the one, the one I, I saw outside of the Union Hall, the one I was going to testify on. That's why they were holding me. And, and there was another. I remember when they were beating me, this one had a, a heavy ring on with, with the initial D. Let's take a look. You. You. So I got a ring. What's it prove? We'll take a look anyhow. It's a D, all right. <laughs> I searched the house. There's no sign of the kid. Oh, officer, please. Officer. We'll do what we can, lady. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Toscano. Where's that? No, no, the, the kind of cigar that Joe Brown smokes. He's got to be around here somewhere. Feel it. It's still warm. Not ashes. Cigar ashes. There's got to be some other way out of here. There could be an opening. There is. There's an opening here. Daddy! Timmy, you all right? Timmy! Timmy. Sure. Timmy. <laughs> Timmy. Wait a minute. Look, there's no reason to get excited here. Wait a minute. 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 Listen. Wait a minute. Look. Oh, he has no business hitting me, officer. The kid's all right. He's safe. The minute I found out he was missing, I came over to protect him. Some of my boys, they act without orders this sometimes. Is, this is completely illegal. You can't enter a citizen's house without a search warrant. You want to make a complaint? I certainly do. You better do. shut up. You bet I do. He assaulted me. As soon as we get down to the station, you can make out the papers. Well, now you're talking. You and me, we're going to be good friends. Joe. I'm going to give you a little Shut friendly up. advice. Hire yourself a good lawyer. Wait a minute. You can't... A real good lawyer. You can't do oh, this to me. Out the station. Wait a minute. You can't just come out here. We didn't quit, did we, Dad? <laughs> we sure didn't, son. 